at the G-Technic Show and Shine at the GT Bike Smallvans Classic. And we've got a few bits of nice American metal here uh, with a really cool story behind them as well. Uh, in amazing shape as well, absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to hand over to Dan, who will let us know a bit about the story behind these two bikes uh, before we go into the spec on them. Uh, so this is Dan. Hi. Um, so these were a little bit of a barn find. Um, a bit earlier in the year, a neighbour came over to see me that I've lived opposite for 16 years. Uh, her son unfortunately died about eight years ago. And uh, she said, do you know anything about bikes? And I said, yeah, a little bit. She said, well, my son used to build bikes. So I thought, hmm, build bikes. Let me come and have a look. So went across the road and there were these two weapons. Um, and then I spent three hours having a chat with the, uh, the mother. And uh, yeah, it turns out this guy enjoyed his downhill racing. Um, but it was a passion, he didn't compete. Uh, but he used to like going down mountains as fast as he could. So uh, in 96, he went to the Chamonix Valley, uh, saw these ski runs and uh, said, I've got to build myself a bike to go down here. So. Uh, he did his research through the magazines because obviously no internet then. That's the way back then. Yeah, um, <laughs> and he ordered up all the components to, to build this intense M1. Um, and he didn't do things by halves. No, certainly not. So he, uh, he spent a year ordering and buying the components, building it. Um, and then uh, he took it over to the Chamonix Valley and in that photograph down there, it was three days old. Amazing, uh, amazing. And this was called Claudia. And uh, I think his best time downhill, he used to race the cable cars. So the cable car took 15 minutes to get from top to bottom. Uh, he did it in 11 minutes. Mega. Um, but yeah, I, I think I would have really liked the guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially like, the spec choices on these are impeccable. Yeah. Like the, so are these uh, Planet X BMF rims, yeah. I assume, yeah. yeah. So super wide. Uh, you can work out what BMF stands for yourself, uh, but it's it's not not suitable for a family website like this. Um, yeah, AC cranks, chain ring, amazing. And then the fork. So both me and Kev were both stumped by the fork, and Jamie from Mountain Mania's. Let us know that it's a, uh, a Mr. Dirt. It is a Mr. Dirt. Which <laughs> I've never ever seen one. It's something I've read about. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was a quantity surveyor by trade, so he used to document everything. And he actually kept the documentation oh uh, on the Mr. Dirt forks. Amazing. <laughs> um, but, and he used to write all his notes. And here's the invoices, and this Man, is what he paid back in '97. Insane. Tent spot and bracket swing arm. So is that frame and fork? Two, four, four, eight. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the hope. And then, obviously, for the Santa Cruz, which was his daily. Yeah. Um, and he researched the forks, and through the years, how much it came down in price, down to 320 in no 2000. Way. So I want to go into the spec on this one a bit, because this is sort of your, on the heckler, this is sort of your typical 90s UK rider, yeah. burly bike spec. So you've got the uh, Mr. T fork, which was this your solid sort of uh, everyman yeah. downhill fork, uh, oil damped, obviously, and yeah, it's just super solid, super reliable, probably not been serviced since the back in no, the day, no. probably still feels amazing, makes its nice sloshing noises. Uh, D521 rims there on are they bulbs the hubs hope bulbs I yeah, think hope, hope hubs. yeah uh, and then an amoeba stem which was a an azonic coffee which is one of the first upgrades I ever made for my bike when I was a kid uh, which yeah I like that a lot and then FSA Power Pro cranks as well which were sort of the an everyman crank as well that was super super cheap they were 25 quid a set and you could you could break a set really really easily but they were super cheap yeah, to replace yeah, yeah. so everyone had them they did them in loads of colors yeah yeah uh yeah that is a really cool bike 
and then original Fun Saddle as well. So that's when Fun, that's their first product line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they had a set of pedals that came out with that, that had grip tape in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just like how he's upgraded to the to the hydraulics. Oh, and yeah, you've got the uh, floating brake <laughs> yeah, on yeah, as yeah. well. Sorry, totally missed that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, not disc compatible originally, this frame. But then with the floating brake arm, yeah, very cool. And this was a Tom Morris design? So, and then, so it'd be a custom hub axle or a different hub axle as well, wouldn't it? To, yeah, yeah. to fit, the, uh, fit the floating brake in there. But luckily it's all made by Hope, so yeah. nice and easy. Yeah, two absolutely amazing bikes with a really cool story as well. Yeah, well they were saved because uh, she wanted to give them to a bike charity. So, oh, well, I work for a bike charity, so I can't really disagree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there is people that work for bike charities that appreciate this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so they could take them apart and rebuild them, and I went, no, 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 they've got to be kept. As yeah, they yeah. Are. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I love the, uh, the welter saddle on this as well. So these are in the magazines. They, were, yeah. they weren't particularly expensive, and they definitely weren't desirable, because yeah. that is an ugly saddle, but well, that's, it's a cool piece of history. That's what he had on it. So, yeah, mega. Mega.